Yo, 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 it's your boy Speed here, and today we're going to be looking at Sumail's gameplay. This is the match where he absolutely clutched up against Secret by multiple rapiers against Team Secret on Gyrocopter, managing to carry the game. And I really want to analyze it from a deep perspective, not just look at it and give commentary. I want to really analyze every little decision that he makes that enables him to carry this game. And I've obviously looked over it myself already, and I've noticed a lot of cool tips and tricks that you guys can use in your matches as well, or things to think about to gain MMR. But yeah, if you're excited for this video and you've been enjoying all the pro analysis that I've been doing lately, as it's something that I enjoy doing and I think you guys can get a lot of value out of as well, then like the video and subscribe, and now let's get into it. So recently I played a live Pugna game too that I actually recorded over and I talk a lot about how to dominate the support role, just in general, how to make plays alone. So this can apply to the carry role, the offlane role, mid lane, and it's a really cool match that I recorded and I'm posting very, very soon on the main Game League website. If you click the link down below, you're going to be able to view that entire video. It's super, super cool. On top of that, I also want to mention that I recently made a 33 Chen offlane replay. So I have a lot of great content coming out. There's even more, literally I've recorded even more stuff, maybe even some uh, secrets of top 50 players coming up in the Game Leap website as well. So a lot of great stuff. Everyone who I've been talking to about the website has been enjoying it. So yeah, click the link down below and hopefully I'll see you guys there. So the first point I have to mention is this really odd decision. And in fact, I don't think almost anyone would make this besides Sumail. Now he values the satanic that he has on his career here more than anything. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Number one, I think it pairs really well with this Paladin Sword. So he's rushing it, right? But what you might not know is that he actually sold his Maelstrom to get it. Yes, he put it on the Courier and sold the Maelstrom to finish the Satanic. Team Secret has just taken Aegis, and therefore they're probably going to go high ground, right, with their 27k advantage. And knowing this, right, knowing this, he sells the Maelstrom to get the Satanic, assuming that the game would end if he doesn't have this item. I mean, how next level is that? He literally sells a medium item to complete a large item just so his team at least would have a chance to win this fight. Getting into it, they just want to shove the wave here and they ended up getting caught out actually. I think Secret made a really incredible movement that was super fast paced. I mean, if you look at the map, you barely could see this coming from Secret and how fast they actually played. As you know, right now they're all showing top. It's like, oh, okay, they're all showing top. We could just, we could just push in bottom, right? No big deal. Well, that's when they actually got caught off guard. So yeah, they shove in bottom here, and now let's look at the decision making of Samel. So getting into the fight, he ends up getting fissured in a pretty bad spot in the backline and only has one flak charge left. This is a replay bug, he only has one left, right? So pretty bad situation. Obviously gonna use the flak charge, and I would argue that he BKBs a little bit earlier, as the Earthshaker has already used all of his disables. However, it makes sense considering the Axe Kunkka could catch him in a random torrent, or something like a weird cask. Now getting into it, he's obviously just going to have to right click and it's almost impossible to make good decisions in this point. So he casts off his spells, his rocket barrage, his homing missile, his flak, his ulti, and that's generally what you want to do as a good carry player. I watch a lot of 3k, 4k carry players and even below obviously as well. They don't cast their spells fast. Like you have to spam your spells, right? That's just how it works. You notice how in the middle of the fight, and I'm going to play that one more time. I know this might seem inconsequential and it sort of is here, but this is going to help a lot of you if you're really... Uh, take to heart what I'm saying here. Everything comes off cooldown as soon as possible, right? So he's getting gone on instantly. Missile, right? Rocket brush, missile, call down. Then, literally as it comes back up, he clicks it again, right? Almost no downtime at all. And obviously, what upcoming years, it's what gets insane. Socks it with the life drain, keeps him alive on legitimately 50 HP. He gets off his satanic and then starts hitting the nearby target, which is a great decision. He's like, ah, eh, PL is probably not a great target, right? However, he has to make a decision and just hit someone and ends up once again getting decrepted and saved here by the Sox of Pugna. In this case, he ends up going back to base here and we're going to continue to see him make good decisions. So right off the bat, gets hit by a torrent and sort of has to stay in the back. Immediately, he's going to lead in with the flat cannon and I actually think he overextends a little bit and he actually realizes, oh, I have to back up. Once again, a great decrep coming in from the Pugna and I'm not going to lie, if it wasn't for Sox's Pugna, he 100% would have died this fight. There's no arguing against that. However, once again, he does a good job with the Satanic, getting it off and keeping himself alive. And because he clicks it and never forgets to cast any spells or Satanic when he has to, he's able to stay alive, cleans up the fight, going from the Timber Saw to Puppy to Nisha, missile onto the Kunkka, secures the kill, wins the fight. 
Moving on from there is probably my favorite decision out of all of this, besides obviously the selling of the Maelstrom, which clearly saved the match. If he didn't have Satanic that fight, it's obvious he would die. He would have gone stunned for 30% longer, and the fight would have essentially ended. But instead, that's not the case. Second thing I want to note here, he doesn't go high ground. Right? So they win the fight, he isn't going to go high ground instantly. A lot of people, they would win that fight, they're like, Oh, they're all dead. Yes, we can, we can go in, maybe. No, Samel understands that there's a 0% chance they would be able to end the game and a one racks lead wouldn't do anything. Even if they got the racks, there's a high chance they would get caught by a Fisher and get blocked in, then get caught by an X by the time the Kunga respawns, and it would become a disaster as they would have to take a fight on the enemy high ground. And if you guys know anything about, you know, my tips and tricks, you don't want to fight on the high ground if you don't have to. So instead, he takes the tier 2 and immediately starts farming the next item. And this concept can apply to a 20 minute game, a 24 minute game, doesn't matter what time it is. Often you do not want to run high ground, even if you theoretically could get the tower, because you can simply build a net worth advantage. In this duration, he's able to farm a ton of gold, push in multiple waves, and start working towards his next item, which will eventually be the Heart of Tarask. And as you're going to see, he's going from camp to camp to camp, using as much efficiency as possible, and really this is what I want you guys to do. When you're going for a comeback, or even if you're ahead, make sure you don't forget to farm and just be efficient, just because it's the late game. The next thing I want to mention is actually how he kills this midwave, and a lot of people will disregard this as not important. This doesn't matter. This is just a small thing, Speed. You're being you're being so nitpicky. This could never come into play. No, I legitimately see players die all the time because they don't do this. Because the enemy team just pushed in mid, there's a chance they could be here, right? There's a chance, right? They show themselves backing, so you might assume, oh, they're leaving. But that is not the case here. Sumail, so knowing this, is going to auto attack back up, auto attack back up. He's trying to bait the enemy team in and make them go on him deep into his base. If he doesn't do that and he killed the wave instead, right here, there's a chance he actually dies. The difference between getting jumped here and here is incredibly massive. Following that, we're going to see a great smoke play come out from OG. I think they just realize that their waves are pushed out so they have a chance. And that's the main thing you're trying to do when you're, you're stuck in your base. Keep this in mind, guys, and really note it down. When you're stuck in your base, what you want to do is get all the waves out as far as you can and then smoke and try to make a play. Otherwise, you're just going to get choked out and fall behind a net worth. All right, upcoming here is only a small engagement, but I still want to talk about his overall decision making. So right here, Sev overcommits with the stun and actually ends up missing. I don't think he actually hit anyone. Maybe he's just trying to kill the PL illusions. Now, Zai sees this as an opportunity to sort of go and commits, ends up finding no tail on the side. Now, Sumail backs up, right? I guarantee a lot of people would have seen the Nyx getting gone on and overcommitted. Guys, if your teammates are dead, they are dead. Do not have buddy syndrome. That's what I call it. Do not have buddy syndrome. If your Nyx 5 is dead, or your Witch Doctor gets caught out, or your Skyrath Mage gets blown up, do not overcommit, right? You have to be very objective in your movements. He's like, I'm the most important hero, my Nyx dies, I will not go in. Instead, he's just going to try to clear the wave of the cooldown, they decide, okay, we need the Nyx to win the fight, so they allow Secret to have the racks. If they take a fight there without the Nyx, there's a chance they just straight up lose the game right there. And that's the difference between OG and your average stack. You know, they make the decision not to fight the racks, knowing that they have one more left. And I see a lot of people defend racks when they don't have to. Now they can take a 5v5, and every single hero matters at this point of the game. I mean, I guess at every point of the game at that matter. All right, so in this next upcoming fight here, I really love the movement of Smell. And once again, movement as a carry player in your target priority is one of the most important things once you have all your items. So right off the bat here, right, pops his flak, secures the kill onto the Witch Doctor. And the next thing is really what's important. So Matuma Man ends up diving the Pugna here, right? Going on the Pugna. And instead of him running in, he goes backwards. Why is this, guys? Because you want the enemy team to have to chase. If he goes here, it makes it very obvious to Nisha and Sai what their purpose in the fight is. Their purpose, then, in that case, is to go on Sumail. But instead, he's going to try to help protect his supports. And as a farmed carry, you want to do that. You want to stay back and deal with the heroes that are diving, right? There are specific cases where you can dive and kill the enemy supports as well, but for the most part, you want to protect your backline supports, such as Pugnas and, and heroes like this that need to stay alive. All right, once again, we're going to see the same thing here from OG. So this is the point of the game when they got to pick off onto the Timber Saw, and they're ready to go. So they shove in bottom, right? Seb got bottom, Smell got mid, Sox is getting top, and they're getting in the waves. As I said, guys, if you're trying to make plays when you're stuck in your base, you have to have each individual teammate make a play. You have to push in individual waves. 
And now because of this, they're able to get a really good smoke play here and actually find the Earthshaker on the side, which is really the catalyst to a lot of their snowballing here, right? So they get the pickoff onto the Earthshaker. They have two Rapiers on Samel now. He's eaten his Ags, which I like. I think him keeping Boots up until now is a good decision. A lot of people would backpack the Boots, keep the Ags, and save some of the gold, but in his case, I think he really needs the Boots to make sure he doesn't get too kited by the enemy team. Now in this case he defends the wave, gets recalled by Chen, and now he's just going to continue to siege. It's very important to note that he never panics when people are coming in. On top of that, look at his camera right now. You guys see how important this is? He can gauge what he needs to do. He can gauge when he needs to put down a homing missile, when he needs to turn on flak in a second, or if he needs to call down. And because of that, you guys should do the same thing when you're going high ground. Position your camera forward, don't panic, only throw missiles out and spells when you have to, and focus on the racks. This is the best way to siege high ground. Now his team ends up getting gone on, and once again, he's going to retreat to help them out. Not overcommitting, right? You notice how he doesn't overcommit. He is going back to help out his teammates and deal with the backliners. And that's why they get so much damage onto the PL here and end up finishing them off later on. And really, I do believe that. If he didn't go back to help out his teammates there and played it like how most carries would, which is continue to dive, 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 I don't believe they'd be able to win that fight and it would be GG. So you guys could think about that in your own games as well. And pay attention in your matches. Hey, maybe I overextended in this fight. Maybe I didn't help my supports enough. Maybe I'm diving a backliner or forcing my supports to go out of position when I really shouldn't be. And now once again here in this fight, we're going to see an absolutely god decrep, which keeps Samel alive. He keeps getting stunned, but these decreps over and over and over again. I even tweeted about the Sox of Pugna and how potent it is. I really do expect more teams to learn how to play this hero or at least figure out when it's good in niche games because it seems so potent to me. And now we're going to see multiple, multiple buybacks coming out from the side of OG. And they do sort of have to reset though, right? Sumil does not have mana right now. Fortunately for him, Soxa can decrep himself on the Pugna and give him mana. And this baby is the point of the game where Sumil gets his third rapier, three rapiers, literally a thousand bonus damage, no agility. My man doesn't have a single item that gives agility, literally not a single one. <laughs> but that's okay because he does a thousand damage. So once again here, trying to kite out, doesn't want to overcommit, not going in the middle, right? He wants to force the enemy team to dive as far as humanly possible because that is how you win fights in Dota, right? So he's staying separated, only sieging, right? Turns on the flak. Obviously, that's going to deal a ton of damage as every single auto attack is going to deal <laughs> over 500, right? It will do about 500 damage per attack, which it, that might not make sense, but most heroes at this stage of the game are going to have enough armor to block around at least 50% damage, including a lot of supports. And now at this point, all he has to do is BKB and focus the heroes that he can kill. So you don't really want to focus the, the, the Ancient in this case because... I genuinely believe if he does focus the Ancient here, he might not be able to deal with heroes that would disable him and control him and prevent him from killing the Ancient. So he does a good job killing offside to start, right? Then obviously onto Puppy next after he gets unhexed. I mean, he kept getting disarmed and maledicted and everything. But fortunately, the heal once again coming out from Soxa. You can tell he couldn't even move in this fight. Fortunately for him, I think the Satanic Purchase prevents him from getting completely chain stunned. So he eventually gets off the flak here as he got pushed to the other side. But Tumba Man's trying to man up on him, but a thousand damage just way too much as it shreds Yapsor on the side with the flat cannon as well. They're able to find Matumba Man on the side here, and Secret has to call GG. I am sure a lot of you guys were shocked when this happened. I remember watching right back in my day when this game took place. Uh, it was just so, so incredible. I was honestly shocked that this game was even close. It looked completely over, but I think all those decisions really added up to allow Samel to win, and, and that's the thing about getting better at Dota. All of those decisions add up. If he messes up one of those, doesn't sell the Maelstrom, uh, goes down mid and pushes the high ground there, doesn't continue to farm, doesn't buy a heart, you know, all these things, he would lose. I, I believe that. He would lose. And that's the crazy thing about Dota. So hopefully you guys learned a lot about Smell's gyrocopter experience here and his match against the Secret. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed just as much as I did. I really enjoyed making this video. <laughs> I'll see you in the next one. Peace. And hey guys, remember, before you end this video, in the link down below, I've been playing a lot of live games where I talk about my thoughts in real time in the middle of a Dota match. So if you want to get in the head of a pro player, click the link down below to the Game Leap website. Super cheap right now, right? Like, and I'm doing this a ton. We all have time on our hands. I have time to make content. You guys probably have time to enjoy and learn Dota, get better at the game. So yeah, if, if that combo works for you, Click the link down below and I'll see you there.